I, uh, there's something I want to show you. And when I, uh, posted this on, um, the Kiwi farms, I immediately got another shower text and, uh, immediately, and this is what happened. This is the, the gist of it. He messages me immediately, shows me a screenshot of my post and then says, Oh, someone has literally no idea what stage of the case he's at and literally doesn't understand the case or the legal reasoning. Also, you didn't block me. Oh, no, Kiwi bros. So during the last conversation, I said, I might block him. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. And then he comes out and says, oh, well, you didn't block me. I said, as I've stated, I have nothing to gain from talking to you and you are actively hostile towards me. I will no longer respond to you and I will not post messages on your behalf if you want if you want to write me so I can read your messages and champion that as a big win, go for it. So if he feels vindicated just having little read marks next to my messages or his messages, uh, go for it. I'm not going to stop him, but I'm not going to engage with him. He posts half of the conversation. Um, there's another message after this that I wrote him, and I'll tell you what it is. It's just I just said peace with the little peace sign <laughs> to be snarky. And then he wrote me like three or four other messages. And... This is a great example of what I mean, because he sends, he posts this, and the reason why he posts that is because he wants me to follow that up and post the other half of him uh, chimping out at me. Or he wants me to correct this, like I did when I said, like, as I said last stream, I was thinking of blocking him. But it's like, when, when you cut off the narc, he wants to lie and force you to address it so that that contact is made again. And he's doing the same thing with Drexel. Like, Drexel cut him off. He said, hey, nigga, you lied to my face, bish. And he cuts him off. And he says, well, actually, I didn't lie at all. And he, if he, if I did lie, he does not even mad enough to tell me what I'm lying to him about. And he's trying to get Drexel to message him back, like, you know what you fucking lied about. I remember I asked you straight to your fucking face. I said this, and you said that to me. And then this happens, motherfucker. You fucking lie. Because that gets the contact going again. So he's just going to be like a little passive-aggressive dickhole to try and get contact going um, because that's his personality type because he's this fucking retard. Um, uh, it, Drexel dropping him is like a, is like a really big deal. And I, and I didn't expect that because, again, they're, they're like ride or die. They've been together for a long time as friends. Maybe even more than friends. Uh, so this is what I posted that got his attention. Um, I, okay. Actually, I can tell you this as this loads. I can tell you this last stream. I, um, I made a prediction and I'm wrong. So I, I and I'm wrong at the very last second. I believed that Rick, uh, Kayla Ricada was going to take a plea deal and then confess to the, the possession. And then, um, after that, Kayla, both Ricada, Nick Ricada, and April would then point to her confession and say, there's your culprit. She confessed. It was her cocaine. We didn't do anything. And that kind of position is really hard for the state to argue against because they do have a conviction. And they might be able to walk. They might be able to drop the charges. And if they went to trial and lost, and they very well could have because of Kayla's confession, because she would then take the stand on uh, Nick's defense and say, yeah, it was my cocaine. Nick only drank. He didn't even know I was doing cocaine. He's an innocent b good boy. He didn't do nothing. Um, then uh, if he, if the jury was sworn in and then the charges were dropped or he was in any way let go, or if he was acqu acquitted because of Kayla's confession and testimony in his defense, um, he would be, protected from double jeopardy so he would then walk from the courthouse and then go i told you kiwi fags i told Wait, it's the ralph voice i told you you just had to you just had to listen to me i told you the entire time um and then he could he could even say like look we lied uh kayla lied to protect her family she took the probation to protect me um or she i mean look because in his position, in her position, because she took the guilty plea, um, she couldn't then say that she lied because then they could revoke her plea and charge her. Nick could, though, because he had double jeopardy protections. He could then say, 
Uh, she lied. It was Aaron's coke the entire time. The warrant was, but we pulled off this stunt to just get the government off our dicks. But we knew we were lot. We we worked with the government to resolve this, and it's resolved. It was Aaron's coke. We didn't do any coke. The children weren't endangered. Yada yada yada. And he could just say like, "Look, I um, I, I outplayed everybody. I'm the best lawyer in the world. Um, two years probation for Kayla, and everything's as good as gold." Um, that did not come to fruition, and it didn't come to fruition literally the deadline for, for uh, former filings. Because as I mentioned, the really suspicious thing that got me thinking that's that's what they were going to do is that Kayla hadn't entered any appearance. She hadn't entered any appearance at all in the case. So as I mentioned, the omnibusing is a big deal. You got to be busing before the omnibusing or you're fucked. You haven't entered in anything. You, you, you're going to trial and you didn't, um, you know, you didn't try to do anything to set up the trial in your favor. It's a big deal not to have an attorney before the omnibus hearing. So I just assumed that she would represent pro se, take the deal, take the fall, testify in Nick's defense and April's defense, and then they would all walk skipping off into the sunset decrying how they, they triumphed over the corrupt government, trying to fuck them over. But then, but then, Kayla got an attorney. And immediately, and by the way, this is not just an attorney. Um, Kluver, uh, Maggie Kluver, is the prosecuting attorney who still runs a private um, practice in the adjacent county called Big Stone County. Which is a very confusing name because Big Stone Gap is a district in Virginia where Melinda Lay Scott was suing me. In Big Stone County, Minnesota, Maggie Kluver is the prosecuting attorney who runs a private practice, and now she, and she's like a girl boss, like attorney runs her own business type thing. Like she's a pretty impressive person, and she's representing Kayla, which it's not like a public defender. This is like a real attorney, and it was entered the last second, and she asked for a continuance. And so now we have a situation where when the continuance was asked for, we thought, oh, fuck, is the omnibusing canceled? Because they're being tried together and they're omnibusing together originally. But then Kayla asked for a continuance. And originally we thought maybe the judge might grant a continuance to both of them so they can continue to be um, heard together. But that didn't happen. Kayla now has a separate omnibus hearing from from Nick. Um, and... Uh, so th this might be an indication that uh, Kayla is unhappy with whatever they were planning before. Like, why? Why wait to the very last second to retain your wife's counsel? And if you're, um, if you're going to be, I guess you need a different attorney than White. But it's like, what? What's the plan here? Why wait? And if it's not like there's problems in heaven or whatever, there there's a problem between the relationship. It might be money issues because this is the other thing that happened, and this is what got him to shower text me. Uh, Nick is selling his second home, so his property is quite large, and it contained um, a seven-acre, six thousand six hundred square foot adjoined property that was like a dug-in. You can see it's like dug-in. It's weird, I guess, because it's Minnesota. It gets so cold. It's like literally dug into the ground. Um, but this house is up for sale and this is the house and we can tell that April Imholt or uh, April Anderson knee Imholt lives here because there's actually a picture of the entryway and we literally have a picture of April wearing this sweater that's hung up on the, on the curtain rag here. And what's really, really weird about this, by the way, is let's take a look at this picture. Trouble in paradise. That's what I mean. Not not problems in heaven. <laughs> Sorry, you know how my brain works. Okay, this picture wants to fucking load, which it may not. I'm not sure why everything is so slow today. Uh -oh. oh, there we go. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, computer enhance to the right. Computer enhance further. Computer analyze this footage. Josh, this appears to be all the bottles of alcohol that Ricada claimed he poured out after his arrest. Thank you, computer. That's exactly what I thought. 
So we, he lied to his audience straight to their fucking face and said, we poured out all of our alcohol and I'm living clean now. He literally just took a big, big, like bear hugged his entire cabinet of alcohol and duck wallowed over to the neighboring house a couple of acres away and dropped this shit on the writing desk in the kitchen. I was like, oh. There we go. <laughs> and then the CPS arrives at the house and investigates and says, well, I guess he did get rid of all the alcohol. Mm -mm. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. It's in the next house where April still lives. It's where he goes to bang his hot wife. <laughs> I wonder why he's pissing hot for alcohol, Chet. Could it be that there's still alcohol in the second home? It would have behooved him to clean this, especially because we're looking at this. And, um... Oh, he didn't pick the, the bathroom pictures. Where are the bathroom pictures at? Give me a second. Hopefully someone's got the bathroom pictures. Those are important. How the fuck are you going to post these pictures? Oh, he, oh, this guy got it. Um, it's $450,000, seven acres, 660 uh, square feet, by the way. The only problem is the neighbors, and also there might be an issue with the plumbing. If I can find this fucking picture. How long did it take for people to look at this and find the fucking bathroom photos? A lot of this, by the way, is just talking about... Um, one of the things that Riketa has filed in his omnibus hearing is that he is contesting the quality of evidence by the attorney. Um, this is the actual uh, video that was included... Uh, and as a link, and this is an archive from Backwards Internet, and this is the one that shows his um, his nose. It has like a bit of cocaine on it. But I have both a personal copy of, of the stream where he has cocaine on, and I also have a, um, I have a Kiwi Farms archive of it as well. And it's still live on um, Odyssey. Like, and it still has the coke nose. So him claiming that the evidence, the probable cause is bad because um, the stream that he watched is this re-upload. They're literally saying that this is digitally altered to include the fucking, the coke on his nose. Let me show you the coke on the nose. It's after his break. He takes this little break right here. This is when he does coke. And when he comes back in certain lights, I think right here, you can see it because of the contrast with the mustache better. There's a little speck of cocaine right there. That's not on his nose. Very obviously not on his nose uh, before the before the break. Where the fuck is that bathroom photo? I'm going crazy. My I don't know if my sight is slow. It could be my site chat. I'm going to be real with you. I'm afraid if I change my um my VPN, I may never recover my connection chat. <laughs> I wonder if it would just be faster to open the Zillow listing. I don't want to show the address on screen too prominently. That was the issue. Dude, I know. Imagine wasting all that coke. <laughs> you know, Camelot said, and I think he walked this back after he said it, I think he was implying that Ricada was spending upwards of $20,000 a month on cocaine. Isn't that fucking nuts? Sean says that the motion to dismiss that Ricada filed is embarrassing. I've heard concurring opinions from this, by the way. Is there's no way that my fucking site... It must be my VPN, I think. Because my site is base and fast, chat. I'm telling you right now. This chat, this stream does not end until I get the um, the bathroom photo. This is retarded. Yeah, I know. I'm going to send myself the Zillow listing, I think. Okay, I got it. Hold up. I'm bringing it up now, chat. So imagine this, right? 
Imagine that your wife is leaving you. <laughs> Imagine that she demands her own attorney. Imagine that the attorney that she wants is a girl boss from the next door county, Big Stone County. And you have to sell your hot wife's personal 6,600 square foot uh, six bedroom home. And um, you really don't want that house to sell because your wife is a bitch and fuck her. What would you do in that situation? Would you A, thoroughly clean the home that you're selling um, so that it sells? Or would you B, put this on the internet knowing that the Kiwi fags would see it and make fun of you? It's a very tough decision. Do you let that bitch wife pay for her attorney or do you let the Kiwi fags laugh? You're in what's called, in chess terminology, in German, a Zvugzwang. I think that's how you say that. Zvugzwang. Uh, a compulsion to move. Neither move benefits you, but you must move. And so you decide that scorning your bitch wife and making sure that, that house doesn't sell in a timely manner is the appropriate move because every second that you don't sell it, your hot wife, April, is next door with the alcohol and you get to bang her. Um, we believe, the, the bright minds of the Kiwi Farms believe that what you're looking at is a, um, iron oxide is rust. And it's either that the well dug on this land is, um, iron water, which means that it, it oxidizes and will deposit rust into literally everything. Um, or they have rust, they have iron pipes and the rust is coming from their, their plumbing. Um, neither of those are attractive to buyers. The, I think the iron pipes are probably the worst option. Um, from what I understand, no, Josh, it's poop. Okay. Das ist schmutzig. Yeah. Hard water deposits. It's piss stains. Silent Hill. It does look like Silent Hill. A lot of people said this. <laughs> other people okay other people have suggested that this is where april does her spray tan which i i mean you would expect like a silhouette or something there is, i does april like donald trump herself is this donald trump's restroom where he puts on his spray tan is that is it actually spray tan is april doing this is this you gotta be fucking kidding me april sprays there there's no way. No way it's on the nozzle of the shower head. Yeah, I think that this is rust. It's definitely, it's, it looks just like rust. There's no fuck. Listen, I've seen pictures of April. She doesn't look like fucking Trump, okay? She's not walking around rust colored. It's not a spray tan booth. <laughs> That's definitely water from the shower. Okay, chat's trolling me again. Unbelievable. Um, so last second also, by the way, the uh, Riketa, Nick Riketa is asking for, and this almost gave me a brain aneurysm. Um, we've discussed Officer Pomplin because uh, Robert Barnes has accused Officer Pomplin of having a personal vendetta against Nick Riketa, which is why he um, was the one who asked for the warrant. Uh, Barnes directly accused him of, of uh, malfeasance. And then the other person that Riketa has subpoenaed to testify during the omnibus in hearing is a guy called Robert Braunis. Let me spell let me spell this out for you guys on the screen so that this can be so that my utter fucking confusion upon trying to understand this information can be made clear. Robert Braunis a sheriff of Candy, Ohio County, not to be confused with Robert Barnes, the person who accused Pomplin of, of, of um, lying to acquire a, uh, a, a search warrant. Oh, are we understanding? Pomplin, Branas, sheriffs. Robert Barnes, shyster. Okay, have we made clear? When I read the Robert Braun, I'm like, what? What? <laughs> He's why? Number one, why is he calling Barnes in to testify? Number two, why did he spell his name so wrong? <laughs> it was very confusing, chat. Uh, and I think that's it. Until the battle 
of Candy Ohio County Court is settled, we will not know more. Ethan Ralph, poised to strike. A dozen plus Kiwis, gray manning it up, preparing to make a multi-hour long drive to an obscure central, south central Minnesota courthouse. Um, Nick Riqueta, shower probably shower texting me as I fucking speak. I'm assuming that if I check my phone, I have a signal notification. Um, everybody else laughing. The body cam footage. Not. Claimed. Montograph owed three hundred dollars it's like game of thrones every every character here has mo- complex intertwining web of motivations and potential strike points that could ignite at any second what will happen tomorrow chat i don't know um aaron by the way aaron m holt not to be confused with april anderson knee m holt um it has he he violated a court order to not contact his ex-wife which is the one before april and he just took a plea deal so he will pay 135 dollars and he sentenced to 90 days in jail but it stayed so if he manages not to fuck up for a full year um he will not be going to jail uh there might be a, a mug shot by the way i don't know if anyone has the gumption to actually go out and find that mug shot but it's out there as part of pleading guilty, Aaron described his violation as an on a blogcast I host, I mentioned and criticized the person who had the protection order against me. Said he made jokes which he was not proud of. Stated he was not in the same mindset today as he was then, and the relationship between him and the victim was better than before, and that he had took responsibility for his actions. When he left the court, he thanked the judge. So there he is, our big boy. The man who Nick Riccata's wife is supposedly madly in love in with. Now that is the face of pain. <laughs> uh, that's just a really unflattering photo. I don't know what's going on there. That's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a face of a baldo that's all pinching a little bit. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Remember to like and subscribe.